Carlotta Thornley was in a mood. This is your fault, you know, she announced, sweeping into the breakfast room. To add insult to injury, Johannes lounged in his favorite odious armchair with his boots on the table. I have not even had my morning coffee yet. How could I possibly have infuriated you already? Our daughters are gone. If we had filed a report with the iron shoes like I asked, he tossed the paper down, then half the damn city would be poking their ungainly nostrils into our business, as I explained. Who? The Duke of Thornley frowned and opened the door. Their bodyguard gunner looked like what you'd get if you'd wrestled a Rottweiler and a Snow Leopard into a suit jacket. Gunner bowed. Forgive the intrusion. I thought you would want to read this. Johannes waved him inside, unfolding the letter Gunner proffered. Carlotta moved to read over her husband's shoulder. The penmanship was appalling. She recognized it at once. I've located one of your runaways. She patted her husband's shoulder. Perhaps you aren't entirely useless after all. Realm presents Elixir. Episode 5. Vera passed Elsie the flask. They stood beneath the awning of a nondescript used bookstore. Judging your cover, read the peeling sign. The latter, Vera noticed, had been graffitied with the same strange symbol she'd seen in the market last week. A council chair slashed across in red. You don't have to take it. But I do. Elsie unscrewed the cap. For Lou. With that, Elsie tipped her head back and drained half the flask in one gulp. <laughs> no need to chug. D did I do it wrong? Even as she asked, her face began to shift. She must have sensed it, because she whirled to peer at her reflection in the shop windows. Vera watched, amused. Remember what I told you. Picture her face, her body. The more detail, the better. A couple blinks later, a strange new face stared back at Vera. Almost Elsie. Same lips, similar eye shape. But her nose was a bit longer, her cheekbones higher. How do I look? Elsie posed. Not as beautiful as you did a second ago. But Vera couldn't say that. Good enough to fool your own mother, I'd wager. I doubt any elixir is good enough to fool my mother. Elsie squinted through the bookshop window. Is this the place? It doesn't look open yet. Try the door. Vera fought to maintain a straight face. She loved this part. Elsie pushed the door inward and gasped. The whole shop front changed as they stepped inside. Lights flared to life. The dusty, mold-riddled shelves vanished replaced by copper versions laden with rich leather-bound volumes. Elsie stepped inside, lips parted with awe. How even... Vera pointed up. Perched at what would be the second story, in bay windows that jutted out over the street, two bouncers watched the door. They maintained the glamour all night. Now Elsie gaped at the store windows themselves, the dockside street they'd just been standing on was gone. Outside waited another view entirely. A wind-swept beach, palm trees swaying in the distance, waves lapping at the shore. JJ calls themselves a seasonally fluid decorator. If you ask me, they just hate winter. Miss Reeves, it has been far too long since you've graced my humble showroom. Judging your cover's owner had, as usual, outdone themselves. They wore what looked like living palm fronds styled into a three-piece suit, and they'd glamoured their entire body into the rigid texture of palm tree bark. Humble. Right. She opened her arms and let JJ pull her into a bone-crunching hug. As if you aren't the most unabashed person in all of Locke. 
JJ kissed both of Vera's cheeks before they released her. The most unabashed man in lock tonight, if you please. Vera mentally adjusted JJ's pronouns for the evening. His seasons weren't the only thing fluid about him. And who do we have here? JJ had finally noticed Elsie. Uh, Louise. Subterfuge was not her forte. A pleasure to meet you, Miss Eloise. Oh, it, it's just Louise. Or Lou, really. Lou's best. <laughs> Elsie laughed breathily until Vera nudged her ankle. JJ didn't notice. Now, to what do I owe the pleasure of a visit from our city's most well-established hermit? Vera glared. Uh, I'm, I'm not a hermit. Elsie, damn her, only laughed. How many times in the last week have you actually left the bar? JJ grinned. Oh, I like her. I've always said you need a woman willing to call you out on your nonsense, Miss Reeves. Now they both went red. I see. Hasn't been consummated yet, my apologies. Joseph Juliet Taylor, Vera warned. He did not look even remotely sorry. Come inside, you and I are long overdue for a drink and a chat. He tucked Vera's arm through his and led them to a bookshelf at the rear of the shop. The shelf slid aside. Tropical island theme tonight, JJ called over the hubbub. Glittering heaps of rainbow sand shifted around their feet. Overhead, golden mirrored balls sparkled like dozens of suns below a sunset-colored ceiling, and each of the many bars dotting the large space had been transformed into tree houses. Elsie swiveled to Vera, then JJ. She was beaming at the room with almost comically wide-eyed appreciation. This is... I've never seen anything like it. JJ chuckled. Wait till you see the side rooms. Unable to suppress an affectionate smile, Vera leaned over and spoke directly into Elsie's ear. If you want to start your search, I can come find you when my business is done. She caught Vera's hand and squeezed just once. Good luck. Vera's pulse skipped. You too. When she looked back at JJ, he was studying her a little too knowingly. If you're here for relationship tips, uh, my advice is bed that one already. Actually, I'm here on business. Ugh. JJ caught a server's eye and held up two fingers. At least humor me then before you ruin my night. He passed Vera a shot glass. Sighing, she tapped it against his. They downed the shots. When she looked up again, tiny pink hearts haloed some people. Vera narrowed her eyes at JJ. Was that a love potion? <gasps> of course not. Those are completely unethical. New brew I've been working on. The elixir highlights anyone you're physically attracted to, assuming you experience physical attraction. With renewed interest, Vera surveyed the bar again. She did only see hearts around women, or at least people she perceived to be toward the feminine end of the gender scale. JJ's grin widened. Why? See somebody in particular you like? In fact, Vera did spot one ring of blazing neon hearts, but she turned away before she could make out who they were attached to. She had a bad feeling she already knew. I told you, JJ, this isn't a social call. I came to talk about a mutual acquaintance. Harlow Jones. What about the worm? As Vera detailed her encounter at the dam, his face scrunched in distaste. I knew that cockroach couldn't afford to buy so many hush bars above board. But threatening an apotheker? We have enough on our plate avoiding arrest by the city council. We can't start warring amongst ourselves, too. I agree, which is why I'm here. I want to form an alliance. You, me, and some of the other established apothecars. If we all hold our ground and pool resources. JJ wrapped his silver nails on the bar. He won't be able to pick us off one by one. True. 
but I don't want to court trouble if it's possible to avoid it. She shifted closer. JJ, any help you can lend me, I'd repay in full. You know that. I do. But Mr. Jones hasn't said boo to me since I threw him out of here two years ago. Do you really believe that if he succeeds in stealing my bar, yours won't be next? JJ bent to kiss her cheek. I appreciate your concern, truly, and you make some good points. But this isn't just about me. My team relies on me. We decide these things together. Vera knew he valued his employees as much as she did her cousins. He treated his staff like equal partners. I'll send my reply to you tomorrow, Ms. Reeves. He gave her a gentle spin toward the dance floor and went so far as to spank her rear. Now get out there and enjoy yourself for one night. She started to protest, but then she noticed his expression. Beneath the good humor, his eyes had grown troubled. Fine, but don't keep me waiting any longer. I've got a bad feeling Harlow has more aces up his sleeve. Elsie could not stop staring. Everywhere she looked, she chanced upon a new wonder. Acrobats cartwheeling up the walls as if gravity had shifted its axis. Dancers who glided through midair without any sort of gravity at all. In what seemed at first glance to be a bathroom hallway turned out to be an underwater tunnel. A stingray sailed past, making her gasp. On the far side of the tunnel, she found a room with a vast network of catwalks. Performers strutted along the bridges in every direction, gravity be damned, wearing feathers and furs, wings and silk, even some living plants. One man was covered entirely in bioluminescent moths. With effort, Elsie tore her attention from the show. Focus. She tapped a nearby man on the shoulder. He opened his mouth. All that emerged was a parrot screech. Sorry to bother you. Elsie whirled away to scan the crowd for a soberer target. Another man caught her eye. He leaned against one of the palm trees, hands in his pockets, wearing a sequined suit with the leopard print pattern. Elsie weaved toward him. Hello. Hi there. What's your name, beautiful? Lou. If he recognized it, he didn't react. Her hopes sank. Care to dance? Got to meet someone. She left him leaning against his tree and retreated to the main bar. She would care to dance, in fact, but only with one person in this club. She watched several couples slow weaving together, and she couldn't help but picture Vera. Vera tonight, wearing that dapper vest as always, and beneath it a sleeveless white shirt so lacy it had to be an undergarment. And beneath that, Elsie's body felt hot. At the bar, she pretended to wait in line to talk to customers around her. A woman with coral for hair shook her head when Elsie asked if she knew a Lou. But the woman beside her, wearing a faux leopard shawl and rainbow, leaned over. You mean Lucille? Louise. She was distracted by the woman's drink, which smelled exactly like the hairspray her mother used. The woman smirked and swirled the glass. One of JJ's specials. They call it gender euphoria. Not that I'm not plenty woman enough without it, she winked. You want one? With a start, Elsie realized they'd reached the front of the line. Oh, uh, no. Elsie walked toward a seashell-shaped stage. So deep in thought, she bumped into someone. She stammered an apology and found herself gazing up at an older man. He was squinting hard, as though trying to assess if he was really seeing her. Did he know Lou already? She took a gamble. Long time, no see. He bowed. How shall I address you this evening? Elsie's adrenaline spiked. Lou, please, while we're here. The man relaxed a bit. Elsie wondered if she'd passed some sort of test. Of course. Then, bewilderingly, he sniffed her. Where's your signature scent? Lou used perfume now and then, but as far as Elsie was aware, she didn't have a signature. She fixed the man with a withering look. 
How long do you think perfume lasts when you've been dancing all night? Of course. He moved closer. So, are you here on behalf of the social club? There it was again. That phrase, the faint pause around it. What are you up to, Lou? Elsie searched for something neutral to say. I'm testing out a new angle. The man tapped his chin. Recruiting from the underground scene. Risky. Our enemy's got a lot of connections here. Though, I suppose he's made himself a fair few enemies, too. Based on your intel. Elsie's gut tensed. Our enemy. It didn't take a genius to guess that must be Harlow. Intel must mean whatever Lou stole from him. It gave her an idea. I've got it on good authority that at least one apothecary has it out for our enemy. I was thinking of inviting her to our next meeting. She studied the man from the corner of her eye and held her breath when he frowned. You're Augustine okay with that? Augustine. She thought about the other woman she'd met at Vera's. Andromeda. Could they be codes? If this social club operated in secret... Leave my Augustine to me, Elsie replied, because it sounded like something Lou would say. He gave her a long, searching stare. Damn. She must have said something wrong. If she couldn't glean any more information, perhaps she could at least send Lou a message. This apothecary I mentioned. She said Harlow's looking for me. If I don't stay out of his way... Shit. Realization dawned on the man's face. You're the sister. Please, I just want to help. The best way to help is to stay out of this. He turned on his heel. Wait! Elsie hurried after him. The crowds parted easily for him, less so for Elsie. By the time she battled her way through, she'd lost sight of him among the swaying bodies. Elsie let out a frustrated shout. (coughs) Nobody even noticed. No joy? asked a familiar voice. Even in the depths of her despair, the sight of Vera sent a swoop through her stomach. She shivered, and disguised it with a head shake. One lead, but he got away. She explained what little she'd gleaned from the man. I just don't understand how Lou could have kept so much from me. She felt angry at her sister for all the secrets. No, worse than that. Scared, and a little reckless. She looked at Vera. Dance with me. She held out a hand. Vera caught it, pulled them both onto the floor. Elsie slid one arm around Vera's waist as Vera mirrored her. With their clasped hands raised to shoulder height, Vera took charge. She moved into a flawless box step, her body pushing Elsie's back her hand around Elsie's waist, drawing her forward when the time came. She hadn't known Vera could dance. This close, chest to chest, Elsie could feel the wild thrum of Vera's heart. Her own answered. Neither spoke. They didn't need to. When Vera dipped her, Elsie felt the whole room spin end over end. She eyed the distant ceiling the dancers who flew along just beneath its sunset-colored arches. I want to do that, she shouted. Vera lifted Elsie back to her feet, followed her gaze. You sure? Elsie leaned in, close enough that her lips grazed the peach shell of Vera's ear. I want to fly. Flight elixirs tasted like cotton candy. The drink melted on Elsie's tongue, light as air. She felt lighter, too. When Elsie looked down, her feet dangled in midair. Vera took her hand and kicked her heels, gently drawing them both higher. Elsie kicked as well. Too hard. She shot past Vera and nearly careened into a woman in fluffy white angel wings. Sorry! Not funny, Elsie complained. You have to be gentle. Watch. Vera swung her legs like slow, graceful scissors. Elsie imitated her. They glided a few feet higher. This is incredible. Vera kicked again, so they drifted in a lazy arc. I forget sometimes, to appreciate it all. 
Elsie didn't know if Vera meant elixirs, or this bar, or Locke in general. Or maybe something else entirely. Lou is wearing off. The words confused Elsie, until Vera reached up to trace her cheekbone. Should I take more? Vera's smile flickered. Not yet. Please. Please. That word seared Elsie's insides. The two women rotated in midair, drifted closer. Their legs brushed, tangled. Then their bodies touched, Vera's slender figure against Elsie's softer curves. Elsie swallowed. Her throat had gone tight, and all she could think about were Vera's lips, so near her own. I missed this face, Vera whispered. Elsie was staring. She probably shouldn't do this, but right now she didn't care. Vera? Elsie? Kiss me. Vera's eyes flashed. She didn't. Not yet. Instead, her lips feathered the edge of Elsie's jaw, that sensitive spot just below her ear. Elsie's stomach dropped all over again. She slid her hands up Vera's back. Vera kissed her cheek, the corner of her mouth. Every nerve in Elsie burned. Just when she thought she couldn't stand it anymore, Vera's lips brushed hers. And then... Elsie crushed her mouth to Vera's, hard, felt the other woman gasp, lips parting. Vera's hands buried in Elsie's hair. She tilted her head, deepened the kiss. Elsie couldn't think. She couldn't breathe. She wanted this kiss to go on forever. She wanted so much more than this kiss. She slid one leg between Vera's. Vera bit her lower lip. Light, gentle. Just enough to send sparks along Elsie's spine. Elsie gasped for breath, and... Nobody move! Doors crashed somewhere, far below. Blinding lights flooded the bar, followed by shrill screams. Hands where we can see them! Elsie and Vera broke apart, breathless. What's... Elsie started, but Vera was already moving. This way, come on. A hole appeared in the ceiling. Secret door. Elsie risked a glance down and spotted a uniformed iron shoe swinging his club at a girl in a mini dress. They reached the door. Vera yanked Elsie through it, into the sudden shock of Locke's night air. Elsie gasped. From here, she could see iron shoe carriages like Vera's aunts parked all around judging your cover. Elsie had never seen so many of those carriages in one place. Was it really necessary? Vera shook her head. This shouldn't be happening. She tugged Elsie into motion. The flight elixir had not yet worn off. They managed to drift a block before Vera swore. A second later, their altitude dipped sharply. Vera slipped off her high heels. Get ready to run the moment we touch ground. Elsie hiked her skirt above her knees, grateful she'd worn flats. Her feet touched pavement. Over there! They both took off, running. From the corner of her eye, Elsie saw others sprinting, too, in bright sequins and neon clothes. Some people darted up side alleys. One porch light flicked on, a door opening to swallow two fleeing clubgoers before the light snapped back off, the door slamming shut. Vera pulled her into a side alley, down an incline. They were near the flower shop. Ahead, Elsie recognized the back entrance. Vera! Elsie slowed. A figure leaned against the door, holding a carton of some kind. Then Aunt Maud lifted her head. Vera's lips went white. What's going on? I just came from JJ's. Looked like half the damn force was on that raid. Maud's eyes glittered in the street lamps, too bright along the seams. Just came from the captain's office. I've been sacked. No. Why? The Iron Shoes are as good as Harlow's now. And that bastard is gunning for you next, Vera. I can't protect you anymore. You're listening to Elixir by Ellen Goodlett, starring Ava Mag, Keeler Lee, and Marin Miller. Produced by Realm, your portal to another world. Realm, listen away. Elixir is written by Ellen Goodlett. It is produced by Nicole Otto and executive produced by Molly Barton. Voice direction, audio production, and original theme music by Amanda Rose Smith.